Now, Iran's foreign minister says that the U.S. has had an illusion that it could totally dismantle Tehran's nuclear facilities. Uh, uh, apologies there. And this illusion, he said, had thwarted any possible deal. Take a listen. I think the opportunity is there. I think this is a historic opportunity. I think we need to seize it. I think if we don't, if we work on the basis of illusions, we will regret it in the days to come and years to come. I believe we are at that historical crossroad that we can establish the type of relations between Iran and this international community that can in and of itself be the best guarantee that we, it would be foolish for either side to break away from. Contemplating to do Zadiv says there is still deep mistrust between the two sides and both need to work to build trust. At a meeting with the presence of the IAEA chief, Zarif also noted that it would be a big mistake to assume Iran has participated in the talks because of sanctions. He says when sanctions were first imposed, only 200 centrifuges were working, but now Tehran has 19,000 centrifuges. Zarif says nuclear technology is now localized in Iran and Tehran does not need the help of other countries. For his part, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yuki Amano, said Tehran is meeting its commitments within the framework of the Geneva Agreement. We also agreed to implement, that Iran implement, six practical measures within three months' time. I can report to you uh, that these practical measures are being implemented as planned and will complete it early February. We're now uh, back, uh, going back to New York. Joining us is Sarah Flounders, the co-director of International Action Center. Uh, Ms. Flounders, many thanks for joining us here on Press TV. I'd like to get your opinion, if I may, uh, on this choice of words by Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif saying that the U.S. had illusions with regards to what it could achieve from this Geneva deal. Yes, I think it's a very good choice of words to say illusion, because U.S. foreign policy is riddled with illusions that they could pull the world back to the days of colonialism, that they can pull the world back to 50 and 100 years ago when a handful of countries had dominance on the world scale that no longer exists. But they go into every war and every negotiation with that illusion that they can somehow revive their deteriorating position. Right now, as the world now looks forward towards negotiating start negotiations that is starting with regard to a comprehensive deal between the P5 plus one group of countries and Iran, how do you see this playing out? Do you think the U.S. is ready to put aside these illusions and to come to the negotiating tra table with mutual trust uh, and a, a, a good faith? No, I don't think uh, U.S. Uh, leaders uh, or the U.S. top military uh, and banking corporations are ready to do that at all. I think they wanted the illusion and they wanted to create a global illusion that they're engaged in negotiations because the overwhelming majority of the population of the U.S. is against the continued sanctions and threats on Iran. And people all over the world want the normalization of relations and peaceful relations. So they entered into this illusion of negotiations, but I think they themselves have very little interest in pursuing a genuine agreement that will normalize relations with Iran. Well, we're going to have to wait Iran and see how that pans out. I'm afraid I'll have to stop you there, Ms. Flounders. We've run out of time. Co-director of International Action Center, Sarah Flounders, are joining us on the line from New York. Many thanks indeed for your comments here on Press TV, ma'am.